Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, the man on the raft, the story of Poon Lim. On the morning of April the 5th, 1943, about 10 miles off the coast of Brazil, a fishing family in their small boat spotted a Chinese man on a much smaller wooden raft bobbing up and down in the Atlantic Ocean. Waving a shirt and jumping, the man was clearly in distress, so the Brazilian family turned their boat around and they picked him up. Climbing aboard, he was overjoyed, hungry, and very grateful. As they set sail again, the man eagerly ate whatever was given to him. After three days, they landed in Brazil at a town just north of the mouth of the Amazon River. Authorities were waiting for him as the man, unassisted, walked off the boat. Considering his ordeal, this was quite an amazing feat. You see, Poon Lim had been stranded at sea for 133 days, a record for a lone human. Born in Hainan, China, the main island of a series of islands in the South China Sea, Poon Lim attended school, unlike many other kids his age, thanks to his brothers sending money from their factory jobs. At 16, Lim's father, believing that life would be better elsewhere and out of fear that Lim would be drafted in the fight against the rapidly advancing Japanese, he sent him to join one of his brothers on a British passenger freight ship working as a cabin boy. At first, according to his own account, given to Rathan McCann in the book Soul Survivor, he didn't take to life at sea, getting sick and teased constantly. He eventually caught on to the ways of the ship, though, that conditions were terrible for Chinese crew members in general. Discriminated against, given the worst jobs, and shoved into overwhelmingly cramped quarters, this was not the better life that Poon or his father had envisioned. His brother tried to make him feel better by saying, hey, at least the British officers aren't beaten us. As the years went by, though, the conditions for Chinese crewmen on British ships got better, mostly because they had to. The supply of British crewmen had decreased due to World War II. Merchant ships, in order to keep up with the intense demands the war had created, had to entice workers by improving conditions and increasing pay for Chinese crewmen. Lin had actually quit as a cabin boy in about 1937 or 1938 and moved to Hong Kong to enroll in mechanic school. However, after six months, the sea came calling again. His cousin told him of the improved conditions and, most importantly, the better pay. Plus, the Japanese were poised to capture Hong Kong any day, and Lim did not want to be around when that happened. Thus, he signed on working under his cousin as a second steward on the SS Ben Lamont. The SS Ben Lamont began its journey in Cape Town on November 10, 1942, and was crossing the Atlantic Ocean on its way to Suriname, a Dutch-owned plantation colony in South America, before sailing onwards to New York. The Ben Lamont was known as a tramp steamer in that it did not have a fixed schedule nor published all ports of call. Tram steamers often traveled solo, unlike other trade ships that went in convoys. The Ben Lamont was armed, but its heavy, slow movements made it a very easy target. On November the 23rd, more than two-thirds of the way into the voyage at about 11.30 a.m., it was torpedoed by a Nazi U-boat. The ship sank within just two minutes. 56 men perished, 24 British and 22 Chinese, and only one man survived. And of course, there's the hero of our story, Poon Lim. In the mad panic of this sinking ship, Lim was able to grab a life jacket and once in the water managed to swim away from the ship as fast as he could. As this was all happening, he was spotted in the water by the aggressors aboard the Nazi U-boat, but he was simply left for dead. He floated in the ocean for what he estimates was around two hours until he spotted one of the ship's life rafts and swam over to it. It was a wooden raft about eight feet square with a partial canvas roof. Luckily for them, it had provisions in it, a 40-liter jug of water, or about ten and a half gallons, several tins of biscuits and hardtack, a long-lasting cracker, pemmican, sort of like beef jerky, malted milk tablets, lumps of sugar, lime juice, two flares, a flashlight, and even some chocolate. This was to be Lim's home for the next 150. 33 days. Now, initially, he thought that he was going to get rescued pretty quickly, as soon as clients realized that the Belle Lamont hadn't docked. So he only rationed the food out to last for 30 days. However, when no help was forthcoming, he decided his best bet was to hope to drift towards land in the ocean's currents. In order to survive, he fashioned a rain-catching receptacle out of the canvas from the roof, as well as his life jacket. He then made a fishing hook out of the wire from the flashlight and the jagged edges of the tins of biscuits. For bait, initially, he only used bits of Hardtack. Beyond fishing, he decided that he needed to find a way to catch other animals that he occasionally saw while he floated, these being seagulls. To do this, he came up with a little trickery. He took the seaweed from the bottom of the raft, matted it down, and shaped it until it looked like a nest. Then he let fish rot next to this nest. Eventually, his little trap worked, and a seagull swooped in. Lim then grabbed it, eventually breaking its neck, after himself suffering a few cuts from the bird in the process. He then sucked the blood out of the bird and dried the remaining flesh out with salt water, making perfect 
perfect seagull jerky. Because he was a poor swimmer, he knotted one end of hemp rope around his waist and the other to the raft in case he fell in. By day 60, though, he was confident enough that he began to swim twice a day in order to keep his physical strength up. Well, things they were going pretty much as well as could be expected until the second month when a storm nearly destroyed his raft. He survived and was able to repair the craft, though he lost his water and his food supply. Beyond storms and the constant difficulty of acquiring food and drinkable water, sharks were also a major problem. They were attracted to the remaining blood of the fish that he had gutted and hung on the lines to dry the meat. The sharks would often surround his boat, even occasionally ramming the raft. But while sharks are often called apex predators, this is actually a bit of a misnomer. In this situation, the apex predator title it went to Lim. He crafted a sharp hook out of a nail that he managed to pry from the raft. The next shark that came close enough after he'd done this, he managed to hook and pull up into the boat. A fight ensued on the small craft, but Lim ultimately won out, supplying him food for days, including a delicacy from his home island, dried out shark fin. And so he subsisted, and he did it remarkably well for a whole 133 days. He came close to rescue three times during this ordeal. Once when he was spotted by the crew of a passing freighter, but they ignored him, and Lim felt this was because he was Chinese. In a second instance, he was spotted by American airmen out on patrol troll, and they even flew low to investigate, but ultimately no rescue resulted. This may have been because very shortly after they spotted him, a storm came and moved Lim's raft far from where he had been when the planes flew over. In yet another instance, a German submarine spotted him and surfaced, but ultimately decided to leave him to his fate. But this all came to an end when he found himself being picked up by the Brazilian fishermen on April 5, 1943, about 10 miles from shore. And it was three days later that they landed in Brazil. Upon arriving in the town of Belém, despite being relatively relatively healthy, all things considered, and having only lost about 20 pounds during his voyage, he spent four weeks at the local hospital. When he was released, the British consul arranged for him to go to Britain, where he was given a British Empire medal by King George VI. The Royal Navy was so impressed by his survival skills and story that they incorporated his techniques into their manuals. After the war, he decided that he wanted to emigrate to the US, and despite initial difficulty due to the Chinese immigration quota having been met – this would exist in the US until 1965 – he was eventually allowed into the United States thanks to special legislation written by Democratic Senator Walter Magnuson of Washington. Poon Lim ultimately lived to the age of 72, passing away in 1991. To this day, he still holds the official record for the longest time for a lone person to survive being adrift at sea in a small raft. When told about this in 1943, Poon Lim responded, I hope no one will ever have to break that record. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos from the archives that you might enjoy. And as always, thank you for watching.